Um, I'm so excited to be here at Donut GS. I have had the honor of being captioned by Mirabai before, and I'm like so honored. Again, they're probably saying something right now, um, but I'm so honored to be captioned by them again. And Mirabai is literally the best checkout plover. It's awesome. Anyway. Um, Web USB, exciting potential. Um, I sort of don't really need these intro slides and I don't have a lot of time. I'm actually just going to set my timer right now so you can just read it while I'm doing that. All right. I took the train down here to see you all today from Seattle and it was so fun. It was really awesome. I saw the world's largest egg. It was pretty cool. I saw a bee farm. It took me a second to identify. It was really cool. And I also had the pleasure of seeing two Tobias Hawks. It was pretty chill. Anyway, <laughs> so today, uh, any, any MOF fans in the audience? Yeah, all right, MOF Conf is happening soon. All right, uh, so today I wanted to cover a quick history of like web and devices, just so that you can understand like why I'm really excited about web USB, because it'll probably be just some random cool thing to you, unless you appreciate that. Like, what is your web USB and also how to use web USB? And then, like, what I sort of want to see as futures. Speaking of futures, I, I now want a synthetic body. So thanks for that talk, Naomi. <laughs> it was an excellent talk. So the history of, like, not web USB, but, like, web and USB, it's been a struggle. So from 2007 to 2009, I used this adorable thing called the Flash Communication Server uh, and Sir Proxy. And what that did was it allowed you to use Flash to communicate with things like Arduino boards. And so right up until recently, you've got your Arduino board and you have your browser and there is this chasm in between where they don't know how to talk to each other, right? So I'm going to sort of show you all the different ways we've tried to glue and band-aid this together in the past. So the first thing we did was Flash Communication Server and Sir Proxy. So Sir Proxy was basically a really hacky serial to TCP proxy that then uh, took all of the communication on the serial port uh, coming from your Arduino device plugged in, would forward that to Flash, and then you could just like whack the Flash file in the browser and you were done, right? And I'm not going to linger on this kind of code because it was super weird and you had to know things like board rates, data bits, stop bits, parity, all that kind of stuff. And it just wasn't very natural, and we sort of know where this went, right? It was very sad. Um, I still mourn the loss of Flash. I know it was for the best, but... <laughs> my, you know, some of my first jobs in this field were as a Flash developer, so I'm always going to be nostalgic about that. But then 2013 came, and... Chrome Serial became this like really cool experimental thing, and um, you know this is a sad ending to this story. But essentially, we've got the Arduino, we've got the browser, and we have this chasm in between again, right? And so this time we have Chrome Serial, which was basically an API. It was really really cool. You could just be like Serial dot connect, Serial dot blah, and you could just listen to data events and write to it. It was really really cool. Um, the only problem was that you had to sort of be sandboxed in a Chrome app or a Chrome sort of like, like a Chrome OS app even. And that meant that somebody, you know, to use your really cool website that connected with their Arduino, they were also installing this extra app that looked super dodgy and was sitting in the background doing goodness knows what with your Arduino board. So, I mean, that was a really cool approach for a really long time. That was the closest we got. And it was serial. It wasn't actually like USB, USB, that's the only problem too. And so the chip computer was probably the most impressive example I saw of this, where this is like a little tiny $9 Linux computer, and when you first plug it into your computer, you install this really cool Chrome app, and it's literally updating the chip for you. And it's just such a nice interface. Like when was the last time you plug something in that you know looks like this, and you get this actual really friendly interface instead of something that looks like malware that you, you know, one of your family members downloaded because they don't understand security. Um, and the Arduino um, company actually released this really cool app that now only works on Chrome OS, unfortunately, because um, you you can't do Chrome apps like outside of Chrome OS now. And what you can do is you can essentially code up all your code for your Arduino, and you can then flash it onto your Arduino device. And you don't have to have, like, you don't have to download their 100 megabyte IDE. You don't have to have anything on your computer to do this other than a web browser, which I actually think is like super cool. And I'm really sad that it's kind of just stuck in the um, in the Chrome app right now. You can technically run it um, in like a, a non-Chrome OS environment, but 
you have to have this other background app that secretly has a web socket that's running on your computer and again it just everything feels like malware all the time so um, my little joke didn't work that sucks all right um, <laughs> so Chrome serial sadness happened uh, it just wasn't ever an official web spec. So it didn't come to any other browsers, which was really sad. It only worked in Chrome apps, like I said, a million times because that was just such a huge frustration for me. And then Chrome apps were sunset in 2017, unless, again, you were using Chrome OS. So it just, it's sad because we really saw the potential of having really nice interfaces for hardware. Um, and then this brings us to today, <laughs> where we just essentially use browsers and web sockets, right? So again, we have this chasm in between. We have the Arduino, we have the browser, um, we have a Node.js process, woo, JavaScript, um, and then we just kind of like have a web page and the web socket, and the web page is like, can you tell the Arduino to do this thing? And Node's like, all right. And then they're like, all right, Arduino said this thing. And it's like, OK, we'll, we'll tell Arduino this thing then. And it's like that weird thing where like, you know, your best friend's fighting with your other friend, and then you have to be the, yeah, it's not fun. <laughs> anyway, so this is an Electron app that I made using this, uh, this great WebSocket technology. And this is a monogamous radio that my friend at Kickstarter made. He had a Kickstarter, and we both worked at Kickstarter, and it was hilarious. And um, he made this monogamous radio that you can only listen to one radio station on it. And I love that so much. And, uh, but people were like, we want to change the radio station. I changed my mind. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, to break up with your radio station of choice, uh, you know, I made this Electron app because I was like, we can do better for hard wraps. This is what they should look like, but better because I'm not a designer. Um, and, oh, yeah, so then... As I said, this, um, this Arduino create like ID in the browser, like I said before, you can technically run it outside of Chrome OS, but you have to have like this web socket thing running in the background. But technically, it's still using um, Chrome like serial, I think. Yes, it is. It is using Chrome serial, which is really cool. And like, uh, they're actually using my software, which is really cool too. So anyway. Um, what is WebUSB? Let's finally actually get to that. We've got eight minutes left. Um, the WebUSB API provides a way to safely expose USB device services to the web. This is what we want. There were always security concerns with the serial API. That's what I was always told by the Chrome team every time I cornered them at the Chrome Developer Summit. <laughs> um, and they just, like, didn't think it was a spec that was needed. And, and so now we have this new one, which is slightly different to serial. So I just wanted to emphasize it's not quite the same as serial, but it is still interacting with USB devices. So it provides an API familiar to developers who have used existing native USB libraries before. That's the important part, because web serial was just sort of like this invented thing, and it had its own sort of like weird um, you know, API interface that wasn't familiar to like when you're just doing regular serial communication outside of a browser. The web USB spec uses very, very, very similar interfaces to things like libUSB if you've used them before. Um, but again, web USB is not e equal to serial, so you know, it solves some problems for us, but it doesn't solve some of the other problems that we we're looking to solve. And the demo I'm showing today is extremely hacky as a result, but you can see the potential. So why is web USB like better? Well, as I said, um, it has that sort of a better, more expected U, um, API, but also it does this cool thing where there are actually user permissions, which is very exciting. And so you can, um, you can actually elect to connect a specific device to a website, and you don't have to worry about it hijacking your devices and wiping them and doing all sorts of strange stuff with it. So it actually is like user, um, user uh, initiated, which is really cool. It also does this really amazing thing with a device descriptor that you set on your device where if you plug it in, you get this little notification that literally suggests a website to go to. So if you buy something like, you know, off the shelf and plug it in, and someone has implemented like a web USB descriptor on that device, you just go directly to the website and you start interacting with your device. That to me is like, there's no instructions needed. You just plug it in and you're there, right? And so I think that's really, really awesome. And you will see an example of that hopefully in the demo. But you're probably thinking like, oh, why do we have to JavaScript all the things? Here's, here's, here's my argument for you. So hardware interfaces, in my opinion, should be fast to make, they should be cross-platform, they should look really good, and they should also be accessible, right? And browsers are a, a pretty commonly installed application on many computers. 
And so I feel like that's like a given for a lot of the time now. If you are connected to the internet, you generally have a browser available to you. And it just so happens that um, browser-based interfaces are rapidly prototyped. Um, they're hot-patched very easily. You can just deploy something and ship it really fast. CSS is extremely powerful for making things look good. And you also have a consistent accessibility tree across all operating systems and browsers, which to me is like actually really awesome, especially given that we have the accessibility um, object model tree coming soon too. So with this API, hardware manufacturers will have the ability to build cross-platform Java SDKs for their devices. I just want to call out this spec, and I'm going to call out Riley, who's the main author of the spec. This is human readable. Like, no one would ever quote a spec in a talk, um, but I'm actually able to, which is, like, freaking amazing. And I love Riley, and he's so nice to me because I'm always quoting him out of context like this. Uh, and he's like, thanks for being a fan of my non-normative text. And I'm like, that's the most specky thing a spec writer would ever say. <laughs> but anyway, um, web USB use, let's actually get down to it. So I said it was user initiated, right? So the user has to initiate something like a click, kind of like, you know, recording microphone or webcam. Think of it like that. The browser looks for devices after that. It returns device matches. You can actually implement filters and stuff, so you, you can guide them to the correct device. The browser then says, all right, well, all right, I have this device. Are you sure you want to like do the thing? And the user's like, yes, please do the thing. We do the thing with the device. We select a whole bunch of stuff that I'm not going to have time to explain tonight, and then we start transferring to and from it. It's actually pretty chill. It's way less complicated than this diagram looks. I'm sorry about that. Um, and so this is literally the lines of code in order to request the device. And then once you've requested the device, you actually get things like the manufacturer name, the product name, things like that. It's, it's even like before this point that the little, um, that little notification pops out, which is really cool too. And as you can see, you can um, filter by vendor ID, but you can also filter by product ID, which is very chill. Um, and then it only takes about 12 lines of code, less if you don't count the spaces in the comments, in order to start sending your very first packets and bytes to a device, and then also awaiting a response from that device. So again, that is pretty tail. You just need like less than 10 lines of code, and you're away to the races. You just got to like figure out how to talk to the device in the first place. That's the challenging part. And that's where data sheets come in. So I love data sheets. Make them your friend in web USB. We'll, do, we'll grant all your wishes. Anyway, uh, I promised I would have a demo. So I'm going to do a really quick demo because I'm running out of time. This is actually really hard to do. So, All right, so I, I have this device here. It is um, an Adafruit Feather 32U4. And this is just an, uh, an OLED screen. And it just has like, it's very low uh, resolution. It's like 128 pixels by 32 high. So we're going to do that. So I'm going to plug it in, but I'm just going to like leave my browser up. By the way, I got Kissy Pocky today. And that is the coolest name I've gotten from Tabby Cat in a while. All right, so if I plug it in, see that? Which is pretty awesome. Um, so it's saying go to webusb.fragile.systems. I put all my flaky demos on fragile.systems these days. It's a cool domain. All right, this is what we got. So um, I'm going to just like write the word donut really quick. I'm a heaps good designer. Yeah. I hope that I don't mess it up and have to draw it again, because that did actually happen at JSConf. All right, uh, and then I'm going to bring the camera up so you can actually like see this, and then we're going to cross our fingers. This is really hard, everyone. Okay, cool. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we want to actually connect to the board, right? Because it has to be user-initiated event. So I'm going to collect, uh, connect. It's very small, but it basically says Feather 32U4. That's what the board is. I have um, helpfully filtered it, so that's all you need to actually see. Um, and then I am going to hold this up, and we're going to see if we can connect, and then I don't know where my camera is. All right, I'm going to hold this here. Please ignore the really bad manicure I did the other day. If you follow me on Twitter, you'll know what I'm talking about. All right, so I'm going to connect. Oop, we saw a thing. Um, and then I'm just going to click send image, and you're going to see this really fast. Ready? Woo! Yeah. So that, that's like literally like, the, it's not like Arduino and then browser and then like this fan dangling in between. It's literally like 
browser, Arduino, boom, they're like best friends forever. So I'm like really excited about that. Um, I also have this other demo that literally no one cares about but me. Um, and so it makes me really sad, but I'll explain it and show you a video real quick. So generally, before all the days of Arduinos, you had bare microchips like this, and this is literally how you would program them, right? So you have this third-party programmer, and then you're like, I want to put this program on this chip. So you have like a million cables, and it's very complicated. Um, but a lot of these programmers speak um, like USB, right? And so I hacked together this really bad sticky type spaghetti code where I can actually use one of these programmers to upload code to the chip with web USB. And that's me saying, yes, we can do this web IDE thing with, with boards. So here's just a quick video of the really cool interfaces you can make now with web USB for your hardware. And it's just a demo of me connecting to the device and then you'll see the progress of it literally uploading code page by page to the actual microchip. So I'm connecting, I'm picking my programmer, and then it's gotten the uh, signature from the programmer, the signature from the actual microchip, it read the fuse values on it, and then every little hash is like a little page of memory being written until it eventually actually finishes. So that you can just like write code and like, it, it's, I think it's cool, anyway. I think it's really awesome. So demo one was made with a lot of different things duct tape together. It's Web USB Serial, which is by my friend Lewis, he's awesome. Johnny Five, which is by Rick Waldron, also my friend, he's awesome. Uh, the screen library was written by me. PNG to LCD was written by me. It allows you to convert the stuff into like the actual frame buffers. Um, and then uh, OLEDJS Designer is the really cool like interface I used to draw with. That's by my friend, uh, Ray. And then Webpack, because it's the web. I, I never thought I'd have to webpack my hardware code, and I'm not going to lie, I was a little bit sad when I had to do it, because I've always been able to avoid it, but anyway. Uh, demo 2 was made with a bunch of my libraries that you can already use now with Node in order to program chips outside the browser, but I managed to like do some pretty crazy webpack config to get it on at work, um, and I was writing it on a plane because I had nothing better to do. It was a very long, I think it was a 14-hour plane ride. Anyway, futures, because I'm out of time, current support, you're going to love this. Ah, oh. Yeah. But what's cool is if you have an Android phone, you can actually already, if you have like one of those weird USB reverse thingies, you can just like plug anything in and start like hacking at your stuff. It's like, you know, TI-89 days again. Um, but, but I need your help putting pressure on the browser vendors and tell them like, hey, Susan's talk is really cool, you should just like, like do the thing, and then I'll be very happy. Um, why support this? Again, Riley, this will be good for the web because instead of waiting for a new kind of device to be popular enough for browsers to, buy to, to provide a specific API, we've all been there, new and in innovative hardware can be built from the web from day one. It's just like, it's there, it's, it's there from day one. And if you don't like the crappy software they ship with the device, you can just write your own and it already works on every single operating system, which to me is like, has just never happened in hardware land since I've been in it. So if you wanna know more about it and you wanna start playing with this stuff, even on your own Arduino at home, you absolutely can. Please do it. If you find bugs, raise issues. Um, you can read the spec, which again is a completely delightful read if you've read other specs before. Um, the Arduino example is there on GitHub under WebUSB. Uh, and my demo is WebUSB fun. Please don't be mean because it's like really hacky code. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed my talk and thank you.